Welcome. My name is Hawk Jones, and I'll be the moderator for this Engineers Without Borders webinar, Principles of Community Development. This presentation is one of the core programs in the expanding series of online, on-demand continuing education programs created by Engineers Without Borders USA and presented by Contract Solutions Group. Before I turn the program over to our presenter, I'd like to make a couple of announcements regarding the program. As our program begins, you will notice the program itself will fill the majority of your computer screen. On the lower left of your screen, you'll see a pause play button. If for any reason you need to pause the presentation, click once on the pause button. To restart the program, simply click on the play arrow that will appear in the same place. If you should need technical assistance, please click on the email link for client services at Contract Solutions Group, located on our website pages. Or you may call us for assistance from 7 a.m. Pacific Time until 4.30 p.m. Pacific Time, Monday through Fridays. If you are disconnected from the webinar due to local internet issues, simply log back in through the Engineers Without Borders website and restart the program. After the program, you will be taken directly to the attendance reporting page. It is very important that you complete this short form and submit it immediately upon completion of the program to receive full credit for your participation in this program. If this step is bypassed, neither you nor your chapter will receive credit. Now. It's my pleasure to introduce our presenter for the program, Tiffany Martindale, Project Manager with EWB USA. After earning her B.S. in Architectural Structural Engineering from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, Tiffany joined the Peace Corps and served as a woodless construction volunteer in Niger, where she was responsible for overseeing construction of rural building projects using sustainable roof systems. While there, she also worked and trained with Masons to develop a marketing program to promote the use of this technology in their respective regions. She uses those same training skills in her role as project manager with EWB USA, providing insightful guidance and technical assistance to volunteer chapters throughout the assessment, design, implementation, and monitoring process to ensure that the EWB USA projects are sustainable and of high quality. Tiffany, I'll turn the program over to you. Thank you. And welcome to the EWBUSA presentation on our organization's principles of development. These are our steps we use to ensure meaningful community involvement in all of our projects. I wanted to start first with our mission and vision, as I am going to refer back to our mission and, and really what drives us. Um, the mission of our organization is that we support community-driven development programs worldwide by collaborating with local partners to design and implement sustainable engineering projects while also creating transformative experiences and responsible leaders. Our vision is a world in which the communities we serve have the capacity to sustainably meet their basic human needs and that our members have enriched global perspectives through the innovative professional educational opportunities that the EWBUSA program provides. So why should we define our principles? Identification of our driving principles is important because our members can more easily understand what the expectations are of their involvement with our organization in particular. And who is affected by the principles that we've developed? Well, first and foremost, we're all affected as we're all a part of the same organization. By signing into this webinar presentation, you're likely a member of our organization. And we expect that members in California should understand our principles as well as those in Kansas and the staff here at the EWBUSA headquarters. Also important is that our partner communities understand our principles of development because they deserve to know what it means to partner with EWBUSA on a project to help them identify our work with our organization. So what do these principles mean for you? These principles define our organization's role in development work. As long as we are all operating under the same principles, the organization can live up to our mission and vision. One failed project is a failure for all of us, as most of the public knows us as EWBUSA, not at the individual chapter level. So today, I'm going to go over what these 10 principles are in detail. In short, they are summarized by a core value that we believe defines our approach to community development work. We'll demonstrate a few ways that our policies strive to exemplify each of these principles throughout the presentation. As our name indicates, our focus as a development organization is on providing engineering expertise to, 
address community identified infrastructure needs. We value the importance of a holistic approach to community development work. However, additional disciplines will be employed through our work insofar as they relate to and support the core engineering project being designed. Our organization and its members will not adopt projects that lack an engineering design element. For example, projects that are strictly public health business development or microfinance related are outside of our organizational scope. The second principle is community driven, that all of our programs are community driven. This principle reflects the bottom up approach to the development to development that is used by EWBUSA. Each EWBUSA program is developed to be specific to the needs, resources, and constraints of the community that the chapter is serving. EWBUSA programs do not start with the technology and then try to find a community where it can be implemented. Each program has a well-defined community that has requested assistance from EWBUSA. It is in the core of our mission statement that the programs we take on are driven by the community requesting our involvement. It isn't enough for the community to simply request our help. They need to demonstrate their ability to partner with us to meet their needs. The review of the first program document to enter our process, the 501 application, involves a thorough evaluation of the community's capacity to contribute to this program. We look for more than a labor contribution during construction and the capacity to manage and fund maintenance in the future. Under the photo in the, in the slide, you will see that there is a reference to the 501 new program or first project application form. And it is available on the website in the members pages section under the project process start a program tab. The third principle is that of commitment. The EWBUSA chapter and the community which, with which they partner provide equal input in the development effort with each party contributing to the success of the program. The expected contribution from all parties involved with the program is generally described in detail in a written agreement that is developed cooperatively and signed by all parties. EWBUSA chapters maintain a long-term commitment to the community to provide continued guidance on operation and maintenance of the facilities May provide continued education and training as required and carry out monitoring of the program. To ensure the long-term commitment of all parties to the project, for example, the EWBUSA chapter, community leadership, and local organization, EWBUSA chapters are asked to develop a community agreement. This agreement will detail the roles and responsibilities of each party to the agreement both before and after implementation of the projects. Capital costs and maintenance budgets should be included, along with materials acquisition and operational and maintenance tasks. The purpose of this document is to manage the expectations of all parties. Again, a reference under the photo in the, in the present slide is to example documents, including the community agreement sample. And these are located on the website in the member pages section under the project resources slash example documents tab. Next is our commitment to quality. EWBUSA has a well-established process about programs. This is the basis of our quality control program. This consists of a regular reporting about the programs through the pre-assessment, post-assessment, alternatives analysis, preliminary design, pre-implementation, post-implementation, pre-monitoring, post-monitoring, and program closeout reports. It also includes a review of each report by an EWBUSA project manager followed by discussion with the chapter, and then review of all planned implementation activities by a technical advisory committee. This slide provides a brief description of each report and associated number, as you will find on the website. Please note that EWBUSA chapters are required to conduct a monitoring only trip at least one year after the last project implementation within a program before being approved to close that program out. A useful one-page summary of the reporting process is available on the website in the Member Pages section under the Project Process Reporting Process tab. It's the third paragraph down the page. And what you'll find when you go to that web page is this chart. This is the tool 
I was referencing, and this just provides a visual. It is not in the intention of the presentation that we'll go through this document in detail, but you can see what it looks like and know that you've found the right reference when you're surfing through the website. This chart gives descriptions of each report in addition to their associated deadlines. Safety. This principle is based upon part of the American Society of Civil Engineers Code of Ethics. The public here refers specifically to the members of the partner community and the chapter members who travel to the community. It also refers to the general public who will use the infrastructure that is implemented in the community. EWBUSA chapters comply with this principle by following the project process and completing and adhering to health and safety plans for each trip. This is not an exhaustive list of the requirements in the health and safety program. These are key requirements to keep in mind as you are developing your plan and your travel team. Not meeting each of these requirements outlined in the program information could cause a delay in your expected travel plans. In brief, you must have a thorough health and safety plan. Two travel team members must be certified in first aid and CPR and each travel team member must be familiar with the health and safety plan. A complete description of the health and safety program and the related tools are available on the website in the member pages section under the project process health and safety program tab. There is also an example health and safety program plan on the website in project resources example documents. The principle of expertise is based upon part of the American Society of Civil Engineers Code of Ethics. This principle is implemented through the EWBUSA requirements for project mentors. Professional chapters must have a technical lead that meets the established mentor requirements. Student chapters must have at least one, and preferably more than one, professional mentor to lead all stages of the program, assessment, analysis, design, implementation, and monitoring. These mentors must meet the established professional mentor requirements. The students and the professional mentor meet together on a regular basis throughout all phases of the project. Technical leads and professional mentors must travel on every assessment, implementation, or monitoring trip. We require three to seven years of applicable design and construction experience depending on the risk level of the project for each professional mentor or technical lead. We also have some expectations that the professional mentor or technical leads will understand the fundamental principles of our approach to community-driven development, that they will be able to travel, that they will sign a statement of intent and acknowledge responsibility for the project, and we also provide errors and omissions coverage for all paid EWBUSA members. And the Volunteer Protection Act of 1997 will also cover your work with EWBUSA. And then lastly, we re rely on good judgment of our mentors, that they are providing engineering expertise within their field and that they have designed or overseen a project design that is of substantially better quality than um, could otherwise have been administered. A complete description of the professional mentor and technical lead requirements is available on the website in the Members Pages section under the Chapter Resources Sourcebook Downloads Section 4 and Professional Chapters tab. This is again an identification of this useful tool. It's not the intention that we'll go through this chart on this presentation, but the chapters can see what it looks like. Please remember that these requirements apply to technical leads for professional chapters as well as the professional mentors for the student chapters. Briefly, the project level on the left-hand side of the chart identifies the categories that we have placed each of our projects in. Level one is the highest risk to life safety or significant economic loss um, for those projects, we require that the technical leader professional mentor has seven years of direct experience in design and construction related to the project type. Level two are most of our projects. They're the majority of our water supply, water treatment, sanitation, and energy projects. For those, we require the expertise to 
be five years of direct professional experience in design and construction of the infrastructure. And for level three, uh, these are our agricultural projects, improved stoves, computer systems. These are the lowest risk to life safety, um, very minimal risk to uh, economic loss for the community members. And we require three years of direct professional experience in design and construction of a related projects. The principle of appropriateness um, really gets that we implement technologies that are determined to be the most appropriate solution for a community's identified problem. So the solution is almost always a proven technology with a long-term record of success. EWBUSA does not develop new technologies unless there is no existing technology that will adequately address the needs of the partner community. In this case, the technology developed is deemed appropriate for that community. However, it's not assumed that the technology can be scaled up to other communities without thorough community needs assessments conducted. Emphasis should be placed on all of the factors that will inform your design decision. Appropriate technology is a common phrase today, but all too often it is used to describe something that a company in the developed world has worked out in a testing lab without any input from the end users. It is imperative that your partners in the community contribute to your design decisions. Technologies are not considered appropriate simply because they are cheaper to build than something we use here. They are appropriate when they are chosen by the community because they understand it and they know how they can maintain it, including how they will finance that maintenance. Our project process is designed to lead you through a thorough assessment of alternatives. This study should include the community at each step. So if you are sure you're coming up with the most appropriate designs, the community has provided their input. A complete table of links to the project process documents is available on the website in the Members Pages section under the Chapter Resources Sourcebook Downloads Section 5 Projects tab. The chapter must work with the community to implement facilities that can be sustained by the community in the long term. The community must have the financial, administrative, technical, labor, and material resources available to operate and maintain the installed facilities on a long-term basis without outside assistance. The long-term operation and maintenance of the installed facilities is an essential part of the design of the project and should be fully developed prior to the start of any implementation activities. Program sustainability also includes environmental and social sustainability. Many chapters have been conducting monitoring trips on their past implemented projects. By demand, we have developed reports to more accurately reflect the tasks planned and accomplished on these trips. Our monitoring and evaluation program is developing. These tools are the first step in a series of documents that will be used to evaluate the status of our projects. This report is to be used when your sole purpose to travel is to monitor past projects. If you are planning assessment or implementation activities, you should use the 521 or 525 to plan your trip. Those reports now include sections to monitor past projects as well. Links to the instructions and report template for the new monitoring trip documents are available on the website in the Member Pages section under the Chapter Resources Sourcebook Downloads, Downloads and Forms, Section 5, Projects 530 and 531. EWB is not tracking local health statistics or improvements in general economic conditions in a community over time. Rather, we've returned again to our mission statement. Our mission is to implement sustainable engineering projects. Whether or not those projects are working is our measure of success. That is what we intend to study through the chapter reporting on completed projects. A lot of information on the community's capacity to continue operations of the project can be determined through this streamlined approach. So we examine three simple questions over time. Does the project function as designed? And with the responses, we can determine that the community has maintained the project. We know that they can afford it. And we know the criteria by which we need to evaluate the project based on whether or not it's still functioning. Second, we like to find out if the community has enhanced the project at all. 
for example, if you're working in a community on a water system, have they extended the reach of that water system by implementing additional taps? If they have done this, then we know that the community can afford the project. We know that they understand it technically. And we know that they've taken some ownership of it. And then lastly, if the community has replicated the project anywhere, then we know truly that the technology is appropriate and it's in demand in nearby communities. EWBUSA chapters recognize that their expertise lies in the engineering aspects of development work. Chapters rely on in-country partners to provide the cultural competency that is required for each program. The in-country partners are usually locally-based non-governmental organizations. However, other locally-based organizations or governments also serve in this capacity. The partnering organization often provides other services, such as translation, transportation, and other logistics and educational training to complement the technical training associated with the implemented facilities. Chapters should not use non-local NGOs or Peace Corps volunteers as their only partner. This is a poster developed by an EWBUSA chapter for purposes of instructing the community on sanitation and hygiene. This chapter had developed this educational tool, but they realized that they could not do this part of the project in a vacuum. They are reaching out to their local partners to provide some cultural context around the message that they are trying to convey. Use your partners for more than logistics. They are your resource for making sure your project and associated materials are culturally appropriate. The top right and bottom left corners of this poster are well done. The community will likely be able to identify with the photos. The top left and bottom right corners are potentially problematic. Often when we attempt to develop tools for illiterate communities, the images at your fingertips are for children in the states. Consider whether or not your partnering communities would identify with our imagery of what it looks like to be sick, the concept of mathematical symbols, the depictions of money and germs. EWBUSA maintains that education of the partnering community and education of our members is key to the success of our infrastructure projects. While the education of student chapter members is an important part of the EWBUSA approach to development work, it can only be realized if the service to the community is of paramount importance in all aspects of the program. Without providing the community training on the technology and how to maintain it, the project will fail. Additionally, the EWBUSA model is structured such that by following the project process through completion of a program, the students involved will gain invaluable practical experience in their chosen engineering field of study. We consider two types of education in EWBUSA projects. A few examples of how we promote education of our partner communities are training on the technology, infrastructure financing for long-term operations and maintenance, and forming leadership and committee structures to maintain the projects. Additionally, to educate our members, we provide technical training, cultural awareness training, and engineering project development. Technical webinars are one way we educate our membership. These and other educational tools are available on the website in the Member Pages section under the Project Resources tab. It is our intention that this webinar has provided specific information on what EWBUSA considers of paramount importance in executing the rewarding work our organization strives to accomplish. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much, Tiffany. And thanks to our participants for your attention. I want to take this opportunity to once again remind our participants that you must complete and submit your attendance on the following web page to receive credit for attending this program. This concludes today's program, Principles of Community Development, brought to you by Engineers Without Borders USA and Contract Solutions Group. Please check our online catalog often for the latest instructional programming from EWB USA and Contract Solutions Group. This program is copyright 2010 by EWB USA, all rights reserved. Thank you for joining us for this program, and enjoy the rest of your day.